see I survived the worst, but my life is glorious. Whoa. Better know that I leave that be hurdle and I'm so victorious. Whoa. Take a look, I'm a symbol of greatness. Now you can call me Morpheus. Yeah. As for securing the win, but to believe I'm so notorious. Yeah. You know that I've been by my bread, even though we rapping that. On the strip, even though you see me higher level trapping now. Oh. I superseded every one of my little struggles in. Oh. Failure has never ever been an option. Trust. You see my paper long like watch our traffic, and I'm about to take the hood oh. shop and get it. Together we made it. You see, we did it. We made it even though we had our backs up against the wall. Come on. Greetings, salutations, and welcome to Eastern New Mexico University Women's Basketball Media Day. I'm Doc Elder. I have the privilege of being the voice of Greyhound Women's Basketball and my privilege to be the MC for this particular get-together. I'd like to start out by introducing the gentleman to my left who needs no introduction, but I'll do one anyway. This is the head coach of Greyhound Women's Basketball, Josh Prock. And uh, coach, first and foremost, congratulations on a job well done last year. Thank you, Doc. It was a, definitely a great accomplishment. Um, Proud of these young ladies and everything that they've done and all the accomplishments that we've been able to. It's a continual process of building to where we are today, but these girls have put in a lot of great work, and it's exciting to, to be where we are today. Two major accomplishments to talk about. One of them is sitting over your left shoulder. That would be the trophy for being Lone Star Conference champs, but also a trip to the NCAAs for the first time ever. Yeah, it was. It was a great, uh, it was a great opportunity for us to, to get that exposure to uh, learn a little bit about what the postseason is about beyond the Lone Star Conference Tournament. And uh, for a lot of these girls, it was their first NCAA trip, even since they entered their collegiate careers. And uh, so for Eastern to be able to do that, you know, again, all the credit goes to the young ladies and that the, uh, they put in the work. You know, I've, I've said this a lot, Doc, you know, on our show that we've had together that coaches sometimes get way too much credit. I mean, these young ladies are the ones that, put the work in, and they, uh, they're they the ones that perform each and every day. So hopefully we can, can keep that up this year. And, Coach, obviously a little bit of a downside to being the defending champs because now you've got the big bullseye on your back. But uh, also there's a tremendous upside to being the team that everybody knows they've got to be. Right, and, and, and that's kind of where you want your program to be. You want everybody to, like, we got to go get Eastern. We got to, you know, and that's where we want it to, we've, since we started here, you know, five years ago. You know, that was kind of the building process of trying to get to where we are today. And so we're here, you know, and these girls fully understand now the expectation that they are going to be the one that everybody's going to be gunning for. So we've got to work that much harder to make sure we're ready. Speaking of which, Coach, you were nice enough to bring your senior class here. We've got uh, six young ladies that were instrumental in helping the Greyhounds win that championship. And let's get to know them a little better. So, uh, Jasmine, why don't you introduce yourself, where you're from, and what you're majoring in. Um, I'm Jasmine Hodgkins, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm majoring in psychology. Very good. I'm Jonna McClelland from Garden City, Kansas. Uh, I actually just graduated in May, and so I'm getting my master's in communications. I'm Serena Johnson, and I'm from Hemet, California, and my major is physical education. Very good. I'm Dejana McCants. I'm from Las Cruces, New Mexico, and my major is social work. Very good. And up in the front row? Um, my name is Amari Dennis. Uh, my new last name is Joseph because I just got married. Um, my major is um, biology pre-med, and I'm from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Very good. Last, certainly, but not least. <laughs> my name is Michaela Connor, and I'm from Dallas, Texas, and my major is um, biology with pre-med. Well, KK, I'll start out with you. And in, in case our uh, viewing audience says, no, that's what uh, you're more familiarly known as. I, you were often asked to guard the best offensive player for other teams. What kind of responsibility goes with that designation? Um, it's a big responsibility, but I really take pride in it because I take pride in my defense. And just a coach asking you, hey, this is your responsibility to guard the best player. Like, if that's my job, what I need to do to get us to win, then I love it and I'll just do my best to guard the best player. Amari, of course, uh, at the beginning of the season, you were putting up big numbers, big reason why we had the fast start that we did. And then, unfortunately, your season was curtailed by an injury. How long did you give yourself to feel sorry for yourself? And how long did it take to say, I'm going to come back stronger than ever? Um, probably the f it, as soon as it happened, I didn't really, it didn't really hit me 
Um, it kind of took a little bit, but definitely when I got back from surgery, probably like the next day or so, I was definitely feeling sorry for myself for about another like week or two. But after that, I was really happy to just be walking and out and about and traveling with the team. So I was really excited to cheer them on and um, witness all the greatness that we had done this year. Well, Daisha, we'll go to you in the uh, back row. I, one thing that really impressed me about you is the fact that you are so versatile offensively. It's tough for them to have one defensive scheme against you. How long did it take you to develop the complete offensive game that you have? Um, it was kind of a right away thing. I've always been a, someone who plays more outside. But I transferred here from UTEP, and I played a lot inside there. So it was kind of just depending on who guards me, I can play outside or inside. So it all depends. But I've always, always done you it. You had the skill. There we <laughs> go. <All right. laughs> well, Serena, a young lady from uh, the Inland Empire of California, for a little geography lesson for people that don't <laughs> know, I, you are a three-point shooter. I, but once you get known as a three-point shooter, then they're just going to come out and get in your grill. So during the course of the season, you had to develop the ability to give that up fake and then take the ball to the hoop. Yes. Um, actually, my coach, you know, he just told me uh, recently, he was like, um, you know, you can develop better, you know, by, you know, pump faking and, you know, going to the basket. And, you know, people will come out to me and, you know, try to block me. And Daisy tries to do that in practice sometimes. <laughs> and so, you know, I just try to, you know, like, just drive it to the basket and, you know, try to, you know, I don't really know how to <laughs> how to finish. Exactly. Like, like, make yeah, happen. make try to make something happen. There you go. Because um, I want to, I want to be able to do more than just shoot the ball. Very good. Well, let's pass it over to Jana. Jana, of course, uh, your career started at one school. You could easily have had an excuse for giving up the game of basketball because you're back. What was it that kept you interested in basketball and got you interested in playing basketball for Coach Brock? Well, that's kind of a tough question. Um, I asked the tough question because you're a con major, so you should be able to. Um, basketball has always been my love. Um, even though, you know, like you said, I did lose my scholarship in my last school due to a back injury. Um, that was very hard. You know, like Amari talks about, you feel sorry for yourself for a couple of days, and then you realize you have to figure out what you're going to do next, what your next move is. And um, I wasn't done. I knew that I could come back from it. Um, and so I did, and I worked really hard and sent out emails, talked to coaches, and then, um, you know, it just came up that Coach Proc, you know, was willing to give me a chance um, that a lot of other places weren't because it wasn't sure that I was going to be back. And so, you know, with him giving me that chance, it gave me confidence um, to make that big comeback. And then, you know, the last two years have just been great. I've loved every minute of it, ready for my last year. Absolutely. Well, Jasmine, uh, in your career at Eastern, you've filled a couple of different roles. You've been asked mm -hmm. to play the point. You've been asked to be the shooting guard. What is the similarity in the two? But how are those two roles really different, even though technically you're playing guard in either situation? Um, it's funny because growing up, I used to play the two a lot, but uh, people kept getting you know, taller and I kept getting shorter. And then, uh, so they stuck me at the one, which, you know, the one, there's a lot of responsibility. You know, the ball's in your hand, you're calling the plays, you are the coach on the floor. Um, but as a two, I think the biggest difference is uh, it gives you an opportunity to focus more on your game because you're not having to, I guess, you know, you're still, it's still a team and you're still being there, you're still a leader, but you're not having to uh, focus so much on the leader part of it, you know, you get to be out there, uh, you get to receive the passes, you're not making the passes, you know, so much. So I think that's the biggest difference. Very good. Well, ladies, very articulate answers, and we'll turn it back over to your boss here for the last minute or so. Coach, uh, one thing that's really impressed me is the fact that you don't schedule a cupcake team. You, mm -hmm. you want to play tough teams, and why schedule the Arizonas and New Mexico's? That's a great question, Doc. Uh, it, first of all, you play those teams, you're going to know right away what your weak points and what your strong points are going to be. And, uh, you know, we, you know, typically in the past, we played a little bit later into November. You know, this year it's actually a little bit earlier. 
So the nice part is we're going to be able to play and then have seven or eight days before our first official game that counts. So we'll be able to make a lot of corrections. But playing those teams, you're, you're going to find out who you are really quickly. And uh, I think, you know, we look back on last year and we played Southern Utah and UNM. I learned very quickly that this team could be pretty special right away. And I think this team has a chance to be that. And we'll learn that very quickly come October 30th when we tip off against University of Arizona. And coach, let me ask you real quickly, when will be the first opportunity for fans to see your team on the hardwood at Greyhound Arena? Uh, it'll be uh, November 30th, which is against UT Permian Basin. Uh, you know, last year we had a home tournament, so this year it rotates to Fort Lewis. So the next year we'll actually be getting it back here again. So we kind of have to rotate that every year. But uh, the November 30th against UT Permian Basin will be our kickoff with the Lone Star, game, uh, Lone Star Conference. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing everybody and uh, putting our product on the floor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a look at Eastern New Mexico University women's basketball as we start the season. And let's hope that when we conclude the season, we're talking about another championship, another trip to the NCAA. So on behalf of the young ladies that came out today, on behalf of Josh Prock, I'd like to thank our crew here in the KNW studio. So for this year, this is Doc Elder saying, so long. And they told us we were never going to get it.